What's up guys, Will here with Montana Mountain UTV and today I'm gonna to show you what all it takes to change your 64 inch X3 uh, into a 72 inch wide X3. Okay guys, here are all the parts needed to make your 64 inch wide unit 72 inches wide. Um, we've got CV shafts, tie rod ends, lower control arms, upper control arms, rear radius arms, rear lateral links um, with the high offset there for 72 inch and these are all stock. And I've been kind of saving up these parts over time to make this more affordable. Um, no, that's not powder coat, it's paint. And uh, yeah, I thought that green would go good with the desert tan and black. So let me know what you think. Um, I've got a customer coming here to look at a truck and then I'll be pulling the X3 in and we'll uh, start tearing it apart. Finally getting some white stuff out there. Woo, all right, I've got her in. And yeah, it's got some damage. If you're following, you've seen uh, Scott and I did a little damage. Ha <laughs> ha, rear two. Okay guys, I'm getting the rear arm out here. I've got the brake lines um, unriveted, drilled the rivets out there, no big deal. Got the CV shafts popped out. It was a little being a little stubborn as they can be. They get real rusty in there. You can even see evidence of MICs and it still wanted to rust in there. Uh, moving right along here, getting the new rear radius arms mocked up. <clears throat> yeah, it's gonna be sweet. Snap ring out of there. Okay, now it's ready to be pressed out this way. We'll go over to the bench. Okay, let's see here. All right, we've got the clip removed. Uh, let's see if this press will squish her out of here. Mm -hmm, Earplugs on. Okay, stop there. She's starting to push out, that's good. I'll jig it up a little different to finish it off. A little backwards, no problem. Okay, I've got the new control arm up here. I'm going to start by trying to push on the outer portion of the bushing. Uh, if you noticed before, I was pushing on the center of the bushing. I only do it to a certain point. If it moves easily, great. You don't want to ruin the bushing while you're trying to press them in and out. So pushing on the cage or the outer part is always the best. Um, in this case, trying to push those out, I was going to compromise ripping the boot, which I did not want to do either. So that's why I started by pushing in the middle. It moved nice and easy. I didn't compromise the bushing or the boot. Um, so now going back together, I'm going to start by pressing this in um, on the casing of the bushing, not the center of the bushing.
close. I'm not going to force it too hard. Check where we're at here. Okay, and you know when you've got her pressed all the way in, when you can see that groove in there for the snap ring. Let's go put the snap ring in. All right, guys, she's looking pretty good. You got everything done for the rear. New CVs, radius arms. I do need to set it down on the ground and let these bushings kind of settle before you try and pinch things down. Um, I want them to kind of sit in their correct position and tighten up and nice and easily so I'm not binding them up. Right, Razor? Yep, we got lots of old parts, bent parts, fun stuff. Some still good usable stuff. I'll hang on to some of this stuff here uh, in case somebody needs it. Wow, so it's very, very low and wide. Look at how squatted at a negative angle those are. I'm going to have to lift her up and adjust the shocks, but I want to get these bushings to kind of find their happy place um, for it tighten things up down here yeah they can kind of be a bugger but yeah gonna need some shock adjustment there i suppose huh yeah wow low rider and i've got the rear one of the rear shocks off here you can see um the vehicle is sitting really low after making it 72 inches wide so if you try and adjust it i made the adjustment here you're really just squishing down that uh, little dampener spring that doesn't really adjust the ride height. Um, so I've got the main spring and the spring compressor here. Um, so I was able to relieve the main spring retainer off the bottom here. And while I'm there, I'm gonna put on these nice CNC um, aluminum powder coated covers. Those are cool. Um, but I need to, and I already did the other side, move these adjustments all the way down. I measured from this clip here about six and a half inches so I moved that a ton um, that should give me some decent ride height right now the angle on those is tires pretty much off the ground um, so I want to be just a little bit below that I don't want them sitting flat or negative uh, I gotta have at least that 12 14 inch ground clearance so stay with me look at her set see how it works Okay, I just lowered the jack and that looks good. I've got a really nice angle on. Before, they just kept going down and down and down. Um, so yeah, pretty happy with that. So got things set pretty even side to side, but this uh, seems to be more of the adjustment um, than just this guy. We're able to move the whole thing down anyways, getting them even on both sides. Uh, just taking measurements from the top down to your adjustment. And uh, we'll get the Polaris maintained ready to go to Sand Hollow. And then I'm gonna pull the front apart, so stay with me.
Okay guys, just kind of getting things uh, lined up here. I'm getting my adjustment on the tie rod end set with the steering wheel straight and level. Uh, getting the tires nice and straight. Don't mind the ugly red. I'll definitely be taking care of that. That red bugs the heck out of me. I despise that red. <laughs> uh, the green looks cool. Uh, I'm gonna do a new black bumper eventually, but I'll touch up some of that red with some more black. And uh, yeah, this thing will be complete. I'll sit down on the ground, see how the front shocks look as far as ride height. I expect I will need to bump those up just like I did to the rears. Uh, but yeah, thanks for hanging out and watching. Definitely hit that subscribe and like. Check out my ride videos if you haven't. And uh, see what you think about the 72 inch. Uh, hit me up in the comment section. Okay, it's on the ground and so far it's not terrible as far as ride height. I may not need the readjustment of the front suspension. Um, total time into this, I had about three hours in the rear and exactly three hours in the front. I started at nine this morning and it's approaching noon. So for someone who has the right setup and the right tools and has done it before, uh, yeah, about six hours front to rear. Um, CV shafts, tie rod ends, upper and lower control arms, radius rods, all that fun stuff. There she is.